Many of the sites which we so often cover are not only attributed to what we believe is in reality a far more recent, well-studied, yet less controversial ancestor, one placed within permitted timelines. Indeed, many of these sites would have been incredible relics so far back within history, periods of development and difficulties, many ancient sites so well-built, thus resistant to weathering, that what we claim as merely re-inhabited locations often become the cradle of more recent academically permitted civilizational flourishment. It would also make sense on a strategic level to have claimed such miraculous technological advancements that these past constructions still displayed as their own handiwork, adopting, or rather hijacking said sites, making academia's job an easy one. For not only are these sites attributed to civilizations who would have been developing said technologies in their mere infancy, but these adopters of past high technology themselves claim to be the creators of said sites, this regardless of the incredible perfection present and the mastery of said sites on display, no matter how unlikely this level of efficient execution would have been, no matter how preposterous to assume they suddenly arose. Alas, this is exactly what one is expected to believe. The Royal Mausoleum of Mauritania, for example, located on the road between Churchill and Algiers, in Tempaza province, Algeria, is an impressive ancient structure, which we have discovered is actually hiding some telltale characteristics indicative of lost technology, and thus lost civilization. Claimed as that of a funerary tomb, like so many other sites we cover, dismissed of its controversial features and academically concluded as the burial site of the Berber king Juba II and Queen Cleopatra Selene II, both past sovereigns of Numidia and Mauritania, allegedly buried at the site. However, predictably, no human remains have ever been found at the site, and this is claimed to be due to tomb raiding. As mentioned here, there are particular features of the site not only hidden in plain sight, but we posit were probably noticed and deliberately ignored during mainstream explorations. False doors indicative of a lost civilization. Furthermore, note the size of the stones in which these and other frescoes have been carved into. Standing tens of feet high, several feet in length, and over a foot thick, these stones were far beyond the weight of what those who are academically claimed as the builders were capable of lifting. Clearly showing signs of an incredibly long life, with several of the build's old stone layers now all but eroded to dust. Not only was the structure built to last, but we feel has in all possibility outlived a past now lost civilization. Who really built the Royal Mausoleum of Mauritania? How did they lift and place such gigantic stones? Why have these features seemingly been overlooked? Questions which desperately need answers. It is a site which we find highly compelling. The modern-day institution, man's way of organizing belief systems into their different clans, cult-like attitudes, often driven by an existential perception specialisms of some form or merely a naturally occurring passion. They are either built around a certain series of events or an apparent fact or claim, which stand as the cornerstones of said institution. It is therefore within the profiteers of said ideology's interests to not only suppress any evidence that may surface that would make their treasured institutions crumble to their very core foundation but to actively destroy said relics whenever one gets an opportunity to do so. The Bamian Buddha, for example. Apparently this monstrous carving, perfectly bored into a sheer rock face in the Bamian Valley of central Afghanistan, is not only a relic, which we hypothesize, was left by a now lost civilization, but due to the facial features once masterfully depicted upon the statue, removed at some later time within history, carved flat, not only making its identification as Buddha questionable, it was for some reason completely destroyed during the Iraq War. Its destruction, I propose, supports our prior posit of it indeed being that of a lost civilization's work, this being the sole motive for such actions. Interestingly, 
hidden voids found behind the carving. If it were indeed a solid carving, as one would have once presumed when gazing upon it, how were these hollow chambers once placed behind said carving? Additionally, not only do most modern institutions deny any of the evidence we so often put forward on our channel, often in regards to a past lost civilization, but fields such as geology is simply actively writing off countless ancient sites and anomalies as simply geological coincidences, their existence being an impossibility according to already established, supposedly concluded chronology for human civilization. One reoccurring strategy, which I like to call the pareidolia effect denial, has befallen countless sites of interest. One of the most hotly debated, being the face on Mars, now simply dismissed as a trick of light, the intriguing pyramidal features nearby which also somehow align with Pleiades. This denial strategy has condemned other said features here on Earth, some of which found in remote places that, according to modern academia, have simply never been inhabited. Thus, regardless of the artificial nature of such places as Gornia Shoria, must be dismissed as mere coincidental geological features. The ruins clearly immense age, often used in an unfortunate twist of fate as support of such claims, as nature eventually reclaims all, thus the older the ruin, the easier this said denial strategy is to argue. That is, until now, in a modern era, where modern technology now allows us to collect a massive amount of information on simply anything, unexplained features, who parts, and many other advanced unexplained legacies of an antiquity, once hidden, now shared far and wide evidence which flies in the face of modern paradigm. The Sharanian is yet another of these curious, clearly immensely old anomalies that regardless of its form, once being carved from extremely tough rock, maybe this is why our lost ancestors built with such enormous stones, and did so in an as yet unexplained, yet clearly highly advanced way known as polygonal masonry. Perhaps they built like this so that their footprint here on our planet be long-lived, designed to deliberately be resistant to the elements, to reach us now in the modern day, giving all of us an opportunity to understand the real history of our Earth, regardless of what others would like. We find all of these things highly compelling.